Welcome back to Harrelson Trumpets. I am in the machine shop and I'm going to show you this horn right here. I'm really excited about this. Uh, I love doing silver and gold as the final finish for trumpets. We don't do as many of those because so many people ask for Rob Ross. But here we have a silver and gold T3 Summit and this thing looks just amazing. It's, it's an awesome horn. I just played it. We just got it put together and I just have to show you this horn. I'm gonna do some other videos that are high quality so you guys can see it, uh, you know, with still shots and HD video, but just so you can see it right now. Now I have two cameras here, so give me a second and I'll try to adjust them both to get both in on this at the same time. Probably right there, somewhere in there. Um, so you can kind of see this horn and just check out what we have going here. So this has the three quarter inch VGR. It's got the crosshatch design on the VGR. I'll show which camera here. So there it is on Facebook and on YouTube, you guys can see it. I've got my mouthpiece in there and I put a silver nut on there just because I thought it'd be fun to kind of mix and match the two. And We've got the crosshatch on the bell crook as well. So that turned out really nice. The gold accents on the slides um, really set this horn apart because you've got the crosshatch on the bell crook, but then you also have the crosshatch on the tuning slide. And that tuning slide is in gold, so it just adds a lot to what you're seeing here. So that is the T3 Summit, and T3 stands for texture, so the third texture series. And what I have to say about it is it's more efficient than the standard setup. So let me get this horn, and we'll take a look at it. Move this around just a little bit, something like that. So now I've got it in my hands. It also has the high efficiency valve stems um, in silver. So I'll get that up close to each camera. There's YouTube. That's in the high efficiency valve stems in silver. These are the crosshatch version. And the crosshatch was designed for this horn. So I specifically designed it for the T3. We don't offer that in our Kickstarter. But if you don't know this already, we have a Kickstarter running right now. We've talked about offering the valve stems for years and uh, we've had them available for Harrelson trumpets for four years now and they add efficiency basically they're going to make a, a horn that's more than a couple years old play easier on certain partials and I'll explain how that works in just a minute uh, but they also have a lot of other features so they have a wider grip so they're easier to pull on and off whereas standard um, valve stems on almost all horns are flush with the barrel on the top of the piston and they're really hard to get off because you can't really reach them. These ones are wider grip, a lot easier to grab. Uh, they have about five times the inertia of a standard aluminum stem, so huge there. Um, and then um, they also, I designed them so that they have a seat for the springs so that they're not noisy. And as you can hear, Harrelson trumpets really aren't noisy at all. There's no spring squeak kind of sound that you normally would hear on say a Bach. And I say that because I've got a lot of box um, of going right here. And you can hear it. <laughs> it's like, it's so loud. I don't even know what's going on with that horn. Uh, but, and here's another one, same thing. There's, for some reason, Bach is just a really loud action. You have to do a lot of stuff to get rid of that noise. Um, but yeah, that would help with the spring noise as well. Uh, what else was I going to mention? So this one does not have, oh, looks like we lost our YouTube feed. YouTube has had a lot of problems lately. What's the quickest way for your customer I have no idea why I'm having this problem. Who they say they are. Well, the easy answer is... Yeah, so something's going on with YouTube. Because it just dropped the video and started playing a video. Alright, well, YouTube users may just be out of luck today. Let me see if I can fix it, but otherwise, I have no idea what happened there. Hmm. I tell you, I've had so many problems with it. 
So, I apologize to any of you watching live that are putting up with me go through going through this. All right, I don't know. I may just give up on YouTube um, because I've had so many problems with it recently. Let me turn this around and I'll see you guys. It'll be backwards, so. Okay, there we go. So, what I've had to do in the past is film a YouTube video and then upload it because their live system has not worked now for over a month. And that's one of the reasons you haven't seen me as often is because I keep having these issues. So when that happens, I usually just delete the video and go back to work. Um, but today I want to continue because this horn is so much fun. I want to get a chance to show you everything I can about it. Um, so the finger ring for the pinky is a hook and a rest. And this customer didn't like the standard version, which normally has more of a hook. So he requested that I make a shorter one. And we take requests like that. So if you want something that's slightly different, we can always do that. But this allows you to put your pinky in there, pick up the horn, or you can rest your pinky up there and still play. It doesn't get in the way of anything. And I'll show you the back side of that bell crook so you can see the whole thing. It really is just so beautiful the way it sparkles. And then here's the tuning slide. Same thing. It's just, it, it's got like a shimmer to it that's, it's somewhat subdued. And at the same time, um, it's got bling. So it's got both. It's not like over the top. I would say it's more subtle than a polished silver or polished gold horn. I personally can't stand polished silver and gold because when I play on stage under the spotlights, I get blinded all the time. And when people try to take photos of somebody on stage holding a shiny horn like that, usually the camera is blinded and you don't see the person, you just see like reflections off the horn. When you have a horn like this and you're up on stage, if you care, um, then when somebody takes a photo, they're, they're not gonna be blinded by anything. They're gonna get you and they're gonna get the horn, which is a huge advantage if you care about photos. A lot of you probably don't, but for the pros out there that are on stage all the time and you want promo photos, then I would highly recommend a brushed silver, brushed brass, or brushed gold finish. And here we have the silver and the gold. So this one does have Saturn water keys. Uh, the lead pipe and bell on this one is a one lead pipe and a 3RX bell. So this is a pretty big bell, it's red brass. Um, it resonates way more than pretty much any other horn out there, uh, any other bell or system out there. And that's simply because we engineered them to resonate more. Maximum bell resonance is a big part of the way we engineer horns here. And you can see we only have one brace on that bell. So if you're comparing this to like a Bach or a Schilke or a Yamaha, it's gonna resonate so much more. Uh, if you're comparing it to a Monet or a Taylor or um, an AR Resonance or a Van Law or any of those, it's gonna resonate more. It's simply because it was designed to resonate more. So uh, that's why we get that. And uh, we also preserve the energy throughout the entire standing wave until it starts to get to the resonating areas and then you can lose a little more. But uh, that's another reason it resonates so much. So this is the T3. I haven't been playing a whole lot lately, but I'll play a little bit for you. I'm not even going to put an insert in it. Yeah, it just sails. It's pretty easy to slide around on the horn. Uh, the tone color that I'm hearing on this horn is kind of um, in the middle of the road, and it will be dependent on my mouthpiece. But a 3RX can become very dark if you want it to. It can spread. And it can also be fairly brilliant if you put the right mouthpiece in there. Right now, I'm getting a huge warm sound that has all those mid and upper overtones. Yeah, it's just the whole room is ringing. This is style A for the tuning slide, style D for the bell crook. I get this question often, but we do not make a style A, the thinner version, in the bell crook. So if you want the lighter version and the one that's less expensive, it is the crosshatch version. And on the Muse, these two parts almost look identical. If you order the Muse and you get the, the included options, then it would be a tuning slide that has a crosshatch. 
So it'd be style A or D, and you would get the bell crook that has the crosshatch, which is style D, this one right here. So if it was a muse, then that's what, how it would look. And I have a muse right here uh, without the lead pipe and bell on it. But you can see this one has the smooth R. So tuning slide R and bell crook R. This is the more expensive upgraded options because it takes us so much more time to uh, machine and hand finish um, the smooth versions that were laser welded and, um, and that are smooth instead of textured. So the textured actually helps us save some cost on uh, the labor side. Now what you may not be able to see is there's engraving all over this valve set. And I've shown you guys some of the engraving. I'm gonna flip the camera around and get it real close. I've shown you guys the engraving off the laser before, and a lot of people said, oh man, it looks horrible because it's so obvious. Well, does it look obvious now? It's there, but it really is hidden. You have to look for it. See that? There's actually Harrelson right here, and our logo, which is a little trumpet, Denver, Colorado, and then up here is the date, May 26, 2020. But you can see that kind of disappears very easily, and that's because it is very thin engraving. Uh, the lines of engraving are only like one thousandth of an inch, so it's not very obvious. Um, I do want to say this. We've been building a lot of Harrelson trumpets all year despite COVID, despite all the changes. We haven't been selling as many as we normally do, um, which is perfectly fine, but we'd like to sell more. And uh, we have been uh, we had a period of time where we moved for three months, so we had to move our whole shop. We also had a period of time, about two months, maybe even longer, where my laptop, where I designed all the custom horns, um, it went down. Long story short, we got it fixed, but in those two months, I built a bunch of horns because I couldn't do custom stuff for our customers, so I built horns that I could build. And I had the programs for the T3, so I made three more T3s, and I don't have them yet. They're out to plating but we have three more T3s. You can't customize them or anything else. But if you like this horn, we have three more coming and they'll probably be available maybe in December, um, hopefully before the end of the year. Depends on how long they take to be plated. Um, we'll also have some other horns. And right now I do have, um, I think eight or nine horns in raw brass available as well. So if you are thinking about getting into a new horn, this is the year of all years to get into a horn for a couple reasons. The first is our prices are gonna go up 15% on the first of the year, which means I intend to make 15% less horns next year. Or if you guys decide to just pay the extra 15% and we get the same number of orders, then we make more money, which is perfectly fine by me. Either way, they go up 15%. Um, so this horn would go up 15%, the Muse, uh, will end up being about $10,000. If you're considering getting a Harrelson trumpet and you want a custom Harrelson trumpet, you should consider putting your $1,000 deposit down in November. Because if you don't, I may cut them off even before the end of the year. We may not offer any new custom horn orders in 2021. And the main reason for that is because we're so focused on new technologies and, and new things we want to create for you that we can't really be slowed down with another 50 custom orders. Instead, we're gonna say, hey, we've got horns, they're gonna be on the wall, you can come in and try them and buy what you like, and we can engrave the receiver, we can put custom finger buttons on there, or change the mod kit the way you want it, but they will not be set up for you and custom built. You'll have to choose a lead pipe and bell that's already assembled, and it's really gonna save us a lot of time. It's gonna allow you guys to choose from more horns when you visit the shop. It's gonna be good for everybody, but it's not gonna be good for those of you who truly want a specific lead pipe and bell and finish the way you want it, or finger rings the right size and placement, all those things. If you're one of those people that wants those things, then put your $1,000 deposit down as soon as possible. This is my, maybe my second warning. There'll be a few more, but um, I know not everybody's gonna watch this live video. Um, but regardless, I'm just letting you guys know ahead of time. And if you are seriously considering getting a new horn this year and you want one in inventory, I will consider trades on uh, horns that are in inventory. We normally do not allow trades, but I will consider one trade, unless you have some amazing thing, uh, you know, some, something you think I would really want, then I might consider two, but pretty much it's always just one trade. 
If you're looking to sell a horn and you have questions on how to do that, I will have a video coming out soon that will show you guys how to sell your horns and get the most money for them because I want you to be able to do that. So then of course you can buy a horn from me. It's, it's a, a win-win all the way around. So does anyone have any questions on this T3? This actually was a custom order last year for a customer who's getting it now. I'm just waiting to hear back from him on one minor detail and then we can ship it. But I wanted to show you guys the horn before it went out the door. I'm just gonna play on it. It's just so rich. I almost don't want to stop playing it. Man, you know one thing I didn't do, and I should have done this right away, was I never put an insert in the VGR. So I've been playing it all this time and I can feel uh, an abnormal amount of resistance. And it's not like it's tightness, but it feels like there's not an insert. Well, I know what that feels like because I, I do that often. You can see there's no insert on the VGR. So let me put on one of my favorite inserts and play it again. And remember, if you have a VGR on your horn, you can infinitely adjust flexibility, slotting, airflow, and adjust the resonance. And I could also hear that I wasn't getting the kind of resonance I want. Oh, there it is. It's like really starting to buzz the way I want to hear it. Okay, so I put in a 344 number six insert. And for me, that's what feels good for each of you. It's going to be different. Um, hi, Willie. It's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. I, I'm really impressed. It's, it's really awesome to see you're uh, hitting the charts and really getting up there. And I wish you the best on your new horn and, and with everything you're doing. If you guys don't know him, you should check out Willie Bradley. He's got a lot of great stuff going on with his horn and his plane. Matt, um, thank you. That's that's nice of you. Matt is on, <laughs> and he says I need to rethink my muse plating idea as well. I mean, I I'm gonna have a 24 karat gold, entirely 24 karat gold horn come back in a couple weeks, and I'll show it, and you can see it. But I'll have to say that because what you're choosing is 24 karat gold, I have to say it is my favorite finish um, because. Of two things first it just looks amazing when it's all 24 karat gold I mean this has highlights but the other thing is as long as you take care of it and I'll tell you how to do that in a second but as long as you take care of 24 karat gold it's really not going to tarnish or change for as long as you own the horn now you don't want to wear off the 24 karat gold so there are ways to prevent that from happening and if you really care one of them is to wear gloves you know and a lot of people say oh I'd never wear gloves well if you have a real expensive horn you want to last a long time, you might consider wearing gloves. If you don't want to wear gloves, then you might want to put something around it, like a leather valve guard or something. And when you do that, you want to make sure to take it off 
regularly and make sure that there isn't dirt and grime under there that's rubbing. And if you do that, it's going to last a very long time. Um, Dave says, are the other T3s Alta plating going to look the same? One of them is going to look very similar to this. The other one is fully 24 karat gold. And then the third one, I don't remember. <laughs> it's probably all silver. That'd be my guess. It might be silver um, with polished silver highlights, that kind of thing. We also have a Muse that's coming back soon and it's all polished silver. So I can't wait to see that. Uh, hi mom and Tom, thank you very much. Good to see you. Um, Eric, John, Edwin, thank you. David, Les, a bunch of you are on. I see people are popping on. You know, I'm gonna try to make this video a little longer for two reasons. One, we, we lost the YouTube feed. So if some of those people may come over here and try to catch us. The other reason is because the longer I stay on, the more you guys start to find me. And that's a good thing too. But it's really fun to show off this horn. And you know, you're not gonna find anyone that is more proud of Harrelson trumpets than me <laughs> because I make them. So I'm always biased when I do these videos because the truth is my heart and soul and my blood and sweat and tears that all went into this company and into these horns. And we were doing the math the other day trying to figure out, you know, how long have I been doing this and what kinds of things have I accomplished? Um, because we're revising the website and we're gonna do a full timeline of every innovation year after year. So we've been working on that and all year we've been excited about this one fact. Next year, in little, little over one month from now, is our 25th anniversary of building trumpets. And the very first trumpet I ever built is actually hanging on the wall right back there. And it was built in January of 1996. So I'm really excited to have our 25th anniversary and we're gonna do a lot of celebrating and a lot of cool things and some special edition 25th anniversary um, options next year, which means there'll be a lot of fun stuff. So it's really exciting uh, for me to be here and to show the horns, but I, I do have to give you guys uh, that little bit of, of information. You know, it's obvious that I'm biased, but I just like to say it once in a while because I am gonna, you know, blow my own horn, right? So this is a T3 for those of you who are just getting on and the T3 is one of my favorite setups on the, the Summit series. It is a heavier, more um, efficient version of some variations of the Summit. We can lighten it up a couple different ways, uh, but at the end of the day, it's always gonna have this fairly heavy bell crook on it, which is going to change the balance a little bit if you lighten other areas up too much. So, um, and the other thing that it does feature is the cross hatch, let me turn this around. The cross hatch valve stems, which are the HEVS, and HEVS stands for High Efficiency Valve Stems. So there they are. That's what they look like. And I'll pull one out and show you. Let me just pull the finger button off. You can see what it looks like. Okay. That's what it looks like. So that's a silver plated cross hatch high efficiency valve stem and once more time one more time i'll tell you that version the cross hatch version is not available on kickstarter but we do have a kickstarter where you can get um the spiral version you can get the sparkle version which is really glimmery or you can get the cylindrical and all three variations measure pretty much the same within like two or three percent um, of inertia in other words, what that means is that they're all going to improve the efficiency around the same amount. So it doesn't matter which one you get, just uh, get the one that you like. But if you haven't seen it, you want to go to my Kickstarter campaign. And if you go to whyharrelson.com or harrelsontrumpets.com, there's a link right there where you can click on it. You can go see um, the high efficiency valve stems known as HEVS. And when you do that, you can pledge. I think there's still a few slots left for 65 bucks. You can get a set for your Bach your Yamaha, Carol Brass, Shilke, and Harrelson. So all of those are available. They're all different sizes, one for each of those brands. Um, but just tell us, you know, you'll get a survey when the campaign is done, and then you'll just tell us which brand you have and which style you want. And they started 65 bucks right now, but after the Kickstarter, they started $100. 
and they go up to, I think, 165 um, once we have the versions in silver and gold. So if you want silver or gold, those are not available in the Kickstarter, only brass. But I'll say this, brass looks pretty good on a silver horn. I'm going to do some videos on it so you can see it. But that's the high efficiency valve stems. I also told you guys that I would explain how they work. And a lot of people have seen my videos and you understand a little bit about standing wave efficiency technology. Uh, one thing I should mention is that standing wave efficiency, the SWE, is an acronym. I created that about 20 some years ago, primarily to make it easy to say. So SWE technology. Now it doesn't mean that we're changing the efficiency of the standing wave, because we call it standing wave efficiency. What it means is we're changing the efficiency of the instrument to maintain the standing wave. So what happens is when you play a note like this, whatever note I'm playing, I am creating a standing wave that's reflecting inside my mouth to the outside of the bell a few inches where it meets static air. And that reflection creates, it sets up a standing wave. And a standing wave has a lot of energy in it and that energy can be transferred into vibration. So if you play your fundamental, then the anti-node would be right in the middle of the horn, which usually is right around the center here. So if I play the partial above it, that's our low C. And now we have two anti-nodes, or in other words, we literally have two kind of sine waves, okay? So the top of the, the waveform is the anti-node, and that's where the high pressure zone is. And when that high pressure zone um, lands somewhere where the tubing wall is thin, or weak, or it's made of some material that doesn't um, have enough inertia, like say plastic or even metal that's thinner, that antinode can then, with that amount of energy, that high pressure, it can start to vibrate that part of the tubing. When that happens, we have kind of an energy leak, is what I call it, even though it really isn't. But you have a transfer of energy from the sound wave energy into vibration of the instrument. And the more vibration you get in your instrument, the less, the less energy is remaining in the standing wave. So essentially what happens on the stems, and this was a huge surprise to me, is that when you add inertia to the pistons themselves, right now I've pretty much doubled the inertia on the pistons with these valve stems, then your valve stem is less likely to move. And for years I discounted this, and people asked me, why don't you make high efficiency valve stems? And for the longest time I said, I don't think they're necessary. And you know, hear me and all my wisdom like I'm the smartest guy, right? I used to say, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think I need to develop these. And it wasn't because I didn't feel like doing it. It was because I honestly didn't believe that it was gonna make much of a difference. However, four years ago, I finally thought I'm gonna make them. And I didn't wanna make them because I was trying to improve efficiency. I wanted to make them because somebody asked me to make a double helix um, valve stem, set of valve stems for their custom trumpet. And this person is um, a genetic scientist and he wanted it to look like DNA. So I sat down at the lathe and, lathe and tried to figure out how to make this double helix design, right? And in working on it, working on it, finally I was like, well, you know what? I'm just gonna cut a regular valve stem, get that part done, and then start to mess with the design. Well, I made a bunch of different variations, and actually I'm gonna show them to you, because they're here. I made a bunch of prototypes just for fun, and I never thought that this would become a product. So this was made in 2016 prototype valve stems, okay? And you can see I've got lots of variations and I was just learning how to kind of fake the lathe into or trick it into making these different designs because you can't really push any buttons to say, hey, make a cool swirl. It's not possible. You have to know how to do it. So you can see like a cross hatch and here's like a plaid looking thing and all different variations. And some of them were like thin or tight spirals. Here's some more sparkly ones that are tarnished. Anyhow, long story short, so I'm doing this and finally I was like, well, I should check them and make sure they work, right? So I took a set and I brought them in to the showroom. I brought them right here to this very spot actually. And I put them on a horn and there was a guy visiting that day um, who wanted to buy a horn. So he's here to like be custom fit for his horn and his mouthpiece and all that stuff. And I was in the middle of doing this at the same time. And I said, hey, do you want to check out these new valve stems? He's like, sure, yeah, we'll, we'll check them out. And I was like, I've never tried them before, so I said, I don't think they're gonna do anything, but they'll look cool. So we put them into a horn that we've been playing for like an hour. And he played it first, and I was like, that's odd, it just 
it sounded different to me. And they said, man, you should check this out. So I start playing the horn and it's a brand new Harrelson trumpet. It was made like a few days before. And I was thinking to myself, well, that just can't be right because it feels easier. And I thought there's no way these valve stems could actually make it play any easier. And I was a little bit shocked because he was feeling the same thing. And I thought, well, this can't really be a placebo because we both literally were saying, had a discussion. I explained how I just didn't think it could change anything. Anyhow, fast forward, I did some work, uh, you know, analyzing the spectrum analysis of different horns with the new stems. And I discovered that even on a brand new horn, you can tell the difference. But the older the horn is, the more wear it has on the pistons, the more you're going to feel the difference on it. Uh, a high efficiency valve stem. So when I realized that, I was like, man, this is the coolest thing ever. I told Jen about it and she was like, well, we should make that a product because people keep asking for it. And I was like, yeah, they do. <laughs> I was like, you're right. Everybody keeps asking for this and I probably should have made them years ago, but I had never made any for sale. And uh, let's see if I can get my camera to stay. And um, long story short, I said, okay, let's put it on the Kickstarter list because we have this list of all these things we want to introduce. The problem is when you release something like this, it's really hard or expensive to get 100 or 200 people to buy it right away to kind of recoup all the R&D because there's a fair amount of work to be done, especially when you're doing it for Bach and Yamaha's variations um, and Shilke, which we discovered had variations, but we can sum them all up, it looks like, with just one stem. And then Carol Brass, which is different. And then our Harrelson horns, which um, were not difficult because we already had it figured out. But then the list beyond that of, of other stems we're considering making, Olds, Canstool, um, Monet, Getzen, Edwards, which is part of Getzen, um, Bauerfine, which could cover uh, like Adam's trumpets, and the list goes on, right? So there's like 10 other brands we could make valve stems for and make them in the high, end, high efficiency version. So anyhow, I was like, that just sounds like a headache. Put it on the list. And now finally, we got to that point on the list where we're like, let's do this. The reason we're doing a Kickstarter is because the Kickstarter allows a lot of people to find it and see it and back it all at once. And the goal really for us is to get up to like twenty or $30,000 funding for this. Because if we do, then we'll probably just go straight into developing several of the other popular brands that have been requested, like maybe Khan or Olds, Canstool, like some of the ones I just mentioned. Um, but if it only reaches, say, $10,000, we're probably just going to be like, all right, good, we sold them. We're going to make some more for the future, offer them in plated variations maybe next year. And maybe we'll do another Kickstarter for stems another day, maybe a couple of years from now, for the other brands. So if you back it now and we get enough people interested and we get up to like $25,000, there's a very good chance we're going to develop the new versions for other brands right away and probably just launch another Kickstarter for those. Um, regardless, that's why we do Kickstarters. And um, it's just a lot easier because you guys create the momentum by sharing the information and sharing the product. And it, otherwise we'd have to pay for all that advertising. It would cost more than we would make. So the T3 does have the crosshatch high efficiency valve stems. They do make a bigger difference on instruments that are more than two or three years old. and it has just completely blown my mind that they work, but they 100% do work. Um, but they also solve probably the biggest problem with trumpets out there today. And that is that most trumpets have aluminum valve stems and those valve stems, um, they have galvanic corrosion that happens when you mix them with brass or copper. So when you put an aluminum stem along with a brass barrel, and I'll show you some, actually, you know what? I have this box trumpet right here. Hold on. Check this out. So this trumpet came in on trade, and the valves actually work. But what doesn't work, I think this is the right trumpet. What doesn't work is the valve stems. I can't get them off. That one comes off, and it's got corrosion. But you can see it's got plier marks all over it because somebody before me couldn't get it off. And then a couple of these, I just can't get off at all. So I'm probably gonna have to cut them out. But when you mix aluminum with brass, this is exactly what happens. If you pull your pistons out and check the valve stems and you're like, oh, they look fine, but you don't pull them apart, you don't really know if they're fine. And this one, I can't get off. And I think I've already tried with pliers. So this is a Bach trumpet that has that problem. 
over half the Bach trumpets I see have this issue. And that one may not, the first valve may not have been stuck because it was greased. This one, the grease could have dried up. And then we have galvanic corrosion. And basically what that means is that literally the, there's a chemical reaction between the two materials and one of them is gonna give up um, electrons to the other. Let me flip this back around. <laughs> Which is kind of a crazy thing, but basically what's happening there is it's a battery. It's literally creating like a battery by taking these two different materials. And that's how batteries are made as well. Although they have like a catalyst, like some kind of liquid inside them. Long story short, most of your valve stems either have this problem or they're going to have this problem at some point. And by putting brass on brass, um, like the HEVS that I have on that horn is silver plated, but silver isn't gonna react with brass either. Then those two, when you put the brass on brass, you're not gonna have that corrosion and you're not gonna have the, the stems fall apart. And that's the number one reason that I think this product line is probably going to be huge. Um, it has been huge for Harrelson users. You know, I probably made like a hundred or some sets in 2016 of the valve stems. And then we ran out like in one year and I was like, whoa, everybody's ordering these things. And uh, it's because he, you know, right here at Harrelson Trumpets, we actually were using aluminum stems and we grease them and tell people you got to keep them greased. Otherwise you're going to have the corrosion. Um, eventually in 2016, finally we said, you know what, enough, we're not going to use the aluminum ones anymore unless they're on the X series or someone just doesn't want them, right? If you're looking for a lighter weight system. Um, but on all Harrelson trumpets, you can always get the upgrade to the brass. On the Summit and the Muse series, it doesn't cost you anything, it's just included. And on the H series and the X series, it's, it's a, an upgrade usually. So long story short, um, and that's like my third long story short today. This horn has the HEVS on it. So that's the whole thing with the Kickstarter. If you guys have questions on the Kickstarter, let me know. I did do an update on the Kickstarter page today that does answer the five most common questions. The first is how do you get, how do you buy on Kickstarter? So you might wanna check that out. It's pretty simple, you just sign up for an account. You pledge the amount of whatever it is you wanna get. So if you wanna get the, the cylindrical set, of HEVS for your Bach or your Yamaha or Shilke, then you just put in the the one you want to get, which is 65 bucks. If you're an early bird, I think we're almost out of early birds, so go do that right away because we're running out of them. And then I think it moves up to 75 bucks. So you save an extra 10 if you do it right away. So I'm gonna play this one more time, and it's this is the saddest part of being the guy that builds the horns, sells them, does the videos. I'll take an order probably this afternoon for a trumpet because one of you guys are going to see this and say I want to buy a T3 and that's typically how it works that's how we get our orders because we do kind of a grassroots advertising where you see our videos or you know one of our clients and we work with you guys individually so I'll probably end up um, selling another T3 here sometime this afternoon or tomorrow because somebody's going to see the video which is great um, and like I said we have three we'll have three in stock but the sad part for me, and this truly is sad, is that my walls are always empty. So you can see this wall is empty. That wall is almost empty. And this wall has a few horns on it. And actually of the few horns, three of them, one's a Puget and two are box. So like I only have one, two, three, four, five, six Harrelson trumpets in this room. And that's the sad part. Like when I get the really cool stuff like this, it's gone instantly. So we got this horn in, we got to put together today. I get to play it for about 15 or 20 minutes and then it's gonna ship first thing in the morning. And that, it makes me happy, but it also makes me sad. I would just love to see 50 or 100 of my horns all in one room, just because there's so much work, you know? I, I think we're up to like 2,000 horns that I've built and uh, the most I've ever seen in one room is maybe 15. So it's kind of a weird thing because you put all that time and energy and love and devotion into something that goes to you guys, which is great. But, you know, sometimes I just miss it. So I'm gonna play it for a minute.
good. So I'm happy and sad about this one because it's such a nice horn. Really what I should do is just build myself one. I can stop complaining. All right, uh, Noah says, Jason, is this trumpet one of your big November sales? Um, this trumpet is sold. So the one you just saw actually is already sold. It was pre-ordered um, last year. So we're still catching up with last year's orders simply because COVID and our move really cut in probably about seven months of our production this year. So if you add everything up, we've only had about um, four months of real production at Harrelson Trumpets around there. And now we have another six weeks of the year. So we won't even make six months of real production this year because there have been so many interruptions. The good news is we moved into a bigger space. We trained uh, people to do more things and basically we can move a lot faster now. So uh, that's not one of the sale items, but we do have three T3 trumpets that will be available uh, probably as soon as maybe two or three weeks from now. So watch for those. Um, Dave asks, do those valves recess on the T3? Yes, they do. On all of our recess top caps, they do recess. So in other words, they do go down inside a little bit. They don't go all the way because we used to make them go all the way down. We had too many complaints from people with uh, poor technique that, you know, I'm not picking on anybody, but they just didn't hold their fingers quite right and they'd miss notes. So we don't make them go all the way down. It does not make the valve throat any shorter. However, um, if you measure the valve throw on our pistons, they are a little shorter than most. Um, and we also don't have lots of bumps um, and deformities inside the pistons. If you guys see the maw valves, the main reason I'm against those, <clears throat> I'm firmly against them, is because I, I got to uh, test the prototypes many years ago before they went into production. We were offered a deal where we could offer them in our horns a long time ago. And we refused that offer simply because one, they were expensive, and two, they didn't do anything. And they literally did nothing on a Harrelson trumpet that was perceivable with equipment, with a spectrum analyzer, um, and they weren't perceivable by the customer either. So we don't use them, we don't um, offer them, but um, one thing you should know is that the ports in our pistons have far fewer obstructions than standard ports. Um, so if you look at the little tubes that go between the pistons, Ours are designed different than, uh, you know, like Bach and Yamaha and Schilke and those. Uh, my mom says, few people would have persevered as you have. Well, you're my mother, so you're going to say nice things. So thank you, mom. I appreciate that. Yes, I have worked hard. Um, and you know that. So let's see. What other questions do we have? That's it. I want to thank you guys for joining me today. Um, it's been fun to do another live video. As some of you know, I was on vacation for a week. Got to take some time and do a road trip with Jolene, and we had a blast. Um, got to see a lot of national parks and state parks and just do a lot of fun stuff. And now I'm back, and I'm pushing hard all the way to the end of the year. I do want to uh, stress that you guys are the reason I'm here, and you guys are what supports my company and Harrelson Trumpets. There are five of us here in Denver working hard for you. And we would truly 100% appreciate if you would mention our name in a kind way whenever you're dealing with anyone who's looking for something we could offer. And if it's you, then reach out and we'd be happy to help you. Um, remember, our horns do start at 2,500, even though they go very high compared to that. Um, and if you are considering a horn that's, you know, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000, we do accept, uh, at least we do look at your trades to consider accepting trades as well to help offset some of that cost. So we're always here to try to make it happen for you. And you, of course, are how uh, we do this in the first place. So the last thing I wanna say is if you've done business with us and you had a great experience, then please leave us a Google or Facebook review and be as detailed as you want because people like to hear the real stories of how things change for you. If you had some kind of negative experience with me, then please reach out to me and work with me because I'm always happy to help anyone who's had any kind of issues that were unresolved. Um, even though it's rare that that's the case, I know that sometimes it does happen and you can certainly reach out and I'll help you in any way I can. I'm here for you guys and I thank you again. I will see you tomorrow. Please, once again, um, check out that Kickstarter.